Hey everyone, James Reeves with TFB TV and welcome to another one of our shotgun torture tests. We've come a long way with this series and it all started under the tutelage of my tactical uncle Clint Smith after we burned down the Beretta 1301 at the Thunder Ranch two-day tactical shotgun course. The 1301 of course passed with flying colors and I had so much fun doing it. I haven't stopped testing, torturing, and occasionally killing shotguns. My respect for the platform, the shotgun, has grown tremendously, as has my mistrust and even disdain of low-end cheap-ass shotguns. After the 1301 video ran, I got a lot of comments pointing me towards trying less expensive Turkish shotguns because, and I swear to God, some of the comments are verbatim, this Turkish semi-auto shotgun is just as good as this Beretta 1301. I think you guys know, personally, yes, I am the type of guy who's willing to spend significantly more money on a firearm purchase if I determine that it's worth the extra expense. But by the same token, if there's no sense in paying more, I'm mostly not going to do it. Mostly. Good examples would be like Holosun, right? I was super skeptical of Holosun, cheap Chinese-made optics, but they've proven that they're pretty damn good. Another good example, Aero, Aero Precision AR-15s. They cost as much or less than like a lot of the big box brand high volume ARs, but they're much better and they're on par with AR-15s that cost like 50% more than an Aero Precision. I'm not sponsored by either of those brands, either of those companies. I just was thinking of good examples of times where I would spend less money and go with this product versus spending more money and going with a competing product. What I'm trying to say is if there is a $400 semi-automatic shotgun that is just as good as the Beretta 1301 that costs like twelve dollars to $1,300, you bet your ass I'm going to try it. The Black Aces S-Max, well, go back and watch the video, but spoiler alert, it died after about 400 rounds. Ever since, we've been testing out various shotguns by pushing 500 rounds through them in one fast range session to see if they can take it. Some can, many can't. Take, for example, the Mossberg Maverick 88, which you can pick up for 200 bucks or so. The 88 ran great despite a brutal range session where I think we fired like on average like one round every seven seconds or something for 500 rounds. So price isn't necessarily indicative of performance, nor is country of origin. Although to be perfectly frank, not one Turkish shotgun has survived TFBTV's shotgun torture test yet. So today we have a higher end Turkish shotgun the Adler Arms HT-108T. I want to give Turkish shotguns a fair shake, so I made sure to get a copy of the HT. I got a handle one at SHOT Show, and I thought, damn, this isn't a bad-looking or bad-feeling shotgun. I was surprised to find out that it's Turkish-made. It's got this great gunmetal gray Cerakote finish that's different without being over the top. It's got an optics rail, pretty decent sights, including a fiber optic high-vis front sight, and you can remove the rear sight and move it, or just mount an optic instead if you want. It's got Turkish walnut furniture that looks and feels like a 7 Series burled shifter knob or something. You get a barrel with a built-in compensator that looks good from a fit and finish, not to mention aesthetic standpoint. It's kind of a cool little shotgun with some pretty neat features. And I was told that these were going to MSRP at 400 bucks. Now, to be honest, I think I'd rather just spend 200 or $250 on an American-made Maverick 88 and trick it out instead of spending $400 on a Turkish shotgun with only a 4 plus 1 capacity. But again, there are features like the coating, the wood, the optics rail, and the built-in brake that make this actually a decent deal for only an extra $150 to $200, especially considering the Maverick 88 has a reputation for having a finish that isn't entirely rust resistant if you live in the humid south like I do. The HT-108T weighs exactly 7 pounds, which is a little heavy for a pump gun, but that's probably due to the wood furniture. The 1301 is a more complicated semi-automatic shotgun that weighs a half pound less than this pump gun. It's got just a four plus one capacity of 2.75 inch shells, and as far as I can tell, no option to extend the magazine tube. It's got some slight beveling around the loading port, which is actually pretty nice, and it takes the sharp edges off. I've seen people cut themselves while loading a tube if it's got some sharp edges, and it isn't something you usually think about, so the extra machining is a good and cost-increasing feature. It comes with a 20-inch barrel with removable chokes. The trigger, not so great. 
Not awful, but not great at eight and a half pounds, and it's a little gritty. I was hoping that this shiny trigger shoe meant that there was gonna be some polishing, but I bet the only trigger polishing is on the exterior. And you know what? That's a great little allegory for this gun because the HT-108T is just that. Polished on the exterior, kinda ugly on the inside. It's a little bit like the Turkish Paris Hilton of shotguns. As usual, truth and salvation are found through the cleansing waters of the TFB TV 500 round shotgun torture test. So right around Mardi Gras, myself, Ryan, my buddy Jock, and Army Ranger, we all took a crack at the HT-108T. We made a couple fun little barricade drills that we were gonna try out with this shotgun. Instead of just like a straight up blast fest, you know, like we usually do, we were actually going to test the handling, the loading, the manipulation of this shotgun behind cover. So I brought 500 rounds of miscellaneous 12 gauge as usual, and as usual we started light with bio ammo birdshot. By the way, huge fan of bio ammo, bio ammo I interviewed them at EWA, biodegradable, non-toxic, lead-free, every shotgun hole has like three to five plastic bags worth of plastic in them. You're going to leave that shit like all outside, so uh, Ventura Munitions, our sponsor, hop on there and pick up some bio ammo. It's reasonably priced. So we get to work. I was really looking forward to running the shotgun, so I was a little bit disappointed with the slow start that we got. It seemed like the first round that would go in would have on. a light primer strike. Got it. Dude, it's not about, give me some rounds. Give me some rounds. <laughs> give it a, here, give it another <laughs> Give it another run. Dude, I hope. <laughs> yeah! What do, you, what do we think, boys? This is like the eighth, ninth, tenth one of these. God Let's damn it. Back a little bit. <clears throat> now it's not going at all. Right, with this little... It barely, barely, barely just looks like it got dinged with like a like roofing. It. Yeah, just a little bit, um, just a touch. So I don't know, for some reason, it, it seems like the first round for all of us. Um, that's been almost every time. It's only been a soft primer strike, so not good. Not what you want. Now this can happen, and it's actually pretty common with brand new shotguns, that might have grease in the firing pin channel. However, I was told that this was not a brand new shotgun. I mean, this is serial number one, and apparently it's been a T&E gun. It's been fired a few times already. Not to mention, I also took it apart and cleaned it before I brought it out to the range, which I don't usually do. So it couldn't have been that. But over and over and over, we were getting light strikes. To make matters worse, when you would get a shot off occasionally, you'd have to mortar the gun. That is, hold the pump while slamming the butt of the shotgun against the ground in order to force the expended hole to extract from the chamber. Yeah. Mm. It should be. <laughs> oh. There it is. Oh, yeah. Hey. <coughs> right, I might be mugging we'll as that. well. But wait a minute, though. Why the fuck didn't it go? All right, so uh, we had a little bit of lube. Always a good thing. Uh, see if it's a lube issue. <laughs> <laughs> Not, lubed it up. Do you want me to get that for you? <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I like that. I like oh, the way, no. I like the way that sounded. All of this points to poor head spacing, although I'm not going to say it was that definitively, it just seems a lot like it. If a shotgun's not properly head spaced, 
misfires are the most common symptom. The excess room for the shell allows some free play and the shell can move forward as the firing pin also moves forward striking the primer which will then soften the blow of the pin and it will cause a misfire. We were getting very very light primer contact so it seemed like the issue for us too much headspace. Now shotgun's headspace off the rim. So it would run for some 12 gauge, but not other 12 gauge. And we've been having a little bit of problems with this um, HT-108. Uh, let's see how it works with slugs. Oop. Help if I put it in the right way. It's not really ejecting all that strong. You see that? It's just like kind of dribbling out. But all those ran. I mean, maybe it just doesn't like this ammo. Yeah. And this is possibly due to the slight differences in rim thickness, possibly. That's just a hypothesis. This is the first shotgun that we had issues with, depending on the type of ammo we shot. And bear in mind, this is all the same ammo that we've used in like our half dozen prior tests. I'm not a gunsmith, and I don't have a shotgun headspace gauge, but all signs pointed to this. Also, for whatever reason, every now and then it would suffer from what I call shotgun bulimia. The HS would try to feed two shells at once, but would end up just throwing them up instead. Like I said, it's a little like the Paris Hilton of shotguns. Making matters worse, or I guess better, depending on how much you're enjoying how this review's going, the sight rail sheared clean off during the drill. Okay, so we were shooting it, um, and the sight rail started working off, and then I just kind of messed with it, and then, boom. Um, you would think that those are some sparkles, some, uh, some sprinkles on there, but that's metal shavings from this working its way loose. And then if you look at the top of the dovetail here uh, you can see we've got like what looks like marks from it coming off it was just like another hilarious misstep at this point because everything was going wrong with this gun when I first got this gun I was really stoked that it had an optic rail but then I found out that it's just a cheap piece of Picatinny dovetailed into the top of the receiver with two small crappy set screws holding the entire thing in place I would think probably any of these shotguns would turn into a convertible with just one hard knock on a barricade, a drop, or maybe even just a lot of rounds down range, assuming it's possible to put a lot of rounds down range with this thing. So I bring the shotgun along with some more bio ammo to Gretna Gun, my favorite gunsmith in the New Orleans area, and Brendan, the produce prince of Bell Chase, showed me a neat little coon ass shotgun head spacing trick. If you have just a little too much head spacing, you can actually take the shotgun by the barrel and lightly but firmly tap the buttstock into a hard surface like concrete, and it might tighten things up a little bit for you. Believe it or not, this worked perfectly. The shotgun started getting great solid firing contact on Rio and bio ammo shells. However, the same issues remained with feeding and cycling. Ejection was weak in almost every tube. There'd be a failure to eject, or the gun would try to load two shells at once, or we'd have to mortar it or near mortar it in order to get it to cycle. Yeah, but it's not even feeding. No. Look at that. So, yep. There, so we had to kind of back it out, slam it back in, just like college. <laughs> Odd. 
fuck was that? You saw that? You saw all the sparks? No. It Dude, it shot sparks fucking yeah, everywhere. It shot sparks everywhere. I never thought I would say this about a pump shotgun, much less a $400 pump shotgun, but this gun was simply not reliable enough to have a burn down test. Do we keep shooting this one or do we? So it failed by a technicality, a TKO, a Turkish TKO, if you will. A burn down test would have been absolutely pointless because who cares if you can run 20,000 rounds through this shotgun if it won't feed more than a tube without some sort of misfire or malfunction. But wait, 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 wait. Don't turn off the video just yet because I think the punchline is coming and you guys aren't even gonna believe this. I had a sneaking suspicion that the HT-108T was not its own shotgun. Like many Turkish shotguns, I wondered if it was actually just like a gussied up version of a less expensive model that you can get from somewhere else. So I go onto Google image search and I type in Turkish pump shotgun. I scroll through hundreds of pictures before I see a shotgun that has the exact same trigger guard and the same safety and the same action release button on the same side and the same trigger group roll pins in the same places and even the barrel lug looked identical. My suspicion was spot on. So I think I found the same shotgun and the best part of this is that the shotgun I found was $180 instead of $400 like this one. So I ordered it just to be sure. Lo and behold, a few days later, the SDS imports SLBX2 shows up at my FFL. So I rush home to compare the two. And wouldn't you know it, but it appears that many of the parts are completely interchangeable between these two guns. You can swap the bolt between the two. and the barrels even fit in each, even though you can see here the nut holding the barrel to the mag tubes in a different place since the SDS has a longer fixed mag tube. The mag tubes in caps are even interchangeable. They're threaded to the same pitch so you can exchange the caps from one to the other. The pins all appear to be in the same places, the receivers the same size, the same dimensions, and the trigger group looks identical. Better still, the SDS has one more round of capacity than the HT-108T, even though it's cheaper. It's over a pound lighter. It's got a better trigger that's also over a pound lighter. It's got a pump that at least gives you the ability to mount a light, and it's rated for three inch shells. The bolts look remarkably identical, other than some finish differences. And the SDS has two notches in the rear corner of the bolt, while the HT has just one notch. I still managed to drop the HT bolt in the SDS and cycle it, although it was difficult to rack the action with the HT bolt in the gun. I wasn't about to shoot it with the bolt swapped because I ain't trying to die over a $180 shotgun. Basically, it looks like the HT-108T could be almost the same gun, if not the same gun, with more features as the SLB-X2, which costs less than half as much, but it has a greater capacity. I'm sure it's possible that maybe the less expensive version here, the SDS has a lower build quality than the HT, but how much lower can you go? Because we can barely get anything to work with the HT-108T. Really, it seems like for an extra 220 bucks, you're getting some barrel porting, a Cerakote job, reduced capacity, an optic rail that's less dependable than my child support checks, and upgraded furniture. That might be worth it to you, but I would assume not because who wants to pay $400 for a low capacity fancy pump shotgun that doesn't work worth a shit. Get the Mossberg 88 if you want to go cheap or spend more on like the 590 retrograde if you want to get that wood. Yeah, I'm well aware that there are large well-known manufacturers out there who get shotguns, shotgun parts from Turkey, either on the DL or openly, but they still manage to make a good product. They still manage to make a good shotgun and that's because they stay on top of quality control. But it seems like a lot of the cheap shotguns that are just pouring into the United States right now and selling for anywhere between like 150 and 500 bucks, they end up being junk. And unfortunately, it seems like the HT-108T is one of those shotguns. I think the HT stands for hold tight because I would maybe think twice 
before I purchased one of these shotguns. You guys know we've got more shotgun tests on the way. Hell, we might even try out this $180 SDS job. It looks actually kind of cool. You know, I like it. For 180 bucks, what's the worst that could happen? So we'll give that a shot and we can do this all because we have support from you guys. We don't obviously accept money from anybody to do these reviews or in exchange for positive reviews for a lot of YouTube channels out there. We rely on you guys. We're viewer supported through Utreon and through Subscribestar. Plus we give away four guns a month to Utreon Subscribestar winners. Make sure to check out the details below in the description, but I've got to say thank you to Ventura Munitions for sending the ammo that we use, pick up some bio ammo from them. Thank you to Top Gun Supply. Unfortunately, they don't sell shitty Turkish shotguns, but if you want a good one, check out Top Gun Supply. But stay tuned for more, and thanks again for watching. Take care.